Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Light of the Valley. We are celebrating today. It's the end of this uh, uh, Easter season, and so we're celebrating the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. On this day, we celebrate the fact that the Holy Spirit came to his disciples just as Jesus promised to him. And from there, they went out to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. So we're going to talk about that today through our worship, through our sermon, through the service today. And we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll be starting with the hymn there on page three. But I also want to extend a welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. A pleasure to have you here. If you haven't already, you can download the worship folder on our website, lotvlayton.org. Go to the worship tab, worship folders, so you can find the one dated for today, which is June 5th, 2022. So with that, let's begin our worship by singing our first hymn there on page three, O Holy Spirit, enter in. God bless your worship.
if it's your able. Continue our worship at the top of page four. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of the living God allows the meek to speak. Pour out your Spirit upon us, O Lord. The Spirit of the living God brings healing to the hurting. Pour out your Spirit upon us, O Lord. The Spirit of the living God inspires faith in the faltering. Pour out your Spirit upon us, O Lord. The Spirit of the living God comes streaming through the hearts and minds of all who have brought the faith in Christ Jesus. In each and every life, O Lord, reveal the Spirit's power. O Holy Spirit, with the confidence Christ Jesus has given us, we come to you, confessing our sins and receiving your strength. Come as the gift of truth to expose all pretense and self-deceit. Come as the rushing wind and scour our souls of all that is stale, dusty, and sour. Come as tongues of fire and purge us of everything that is corrupt, base, and infected. Come as the breath of the risen Christ bringing forgiveness and new life. Come as the counselor to encourage integrity and faithfulness. Come as the seal of adoption that we may rejoice. O grace of Christ, redeem us. O love of God, enfold us. O power of the Spirit, invigorate us. Amen. God's word declares everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake our sins are forgiven. Those who believe in Christ are the children of God and are given the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe. Come, Holy Spirit, and make your home with us. Strengthen our faith in you alone as our perfect Savior. Drive away all our doubts to our belonging to you. Give us the words to testify regarding what you have done for us. Amen. We pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. We kindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first Bible reading for today is Psalm 104. All the works of creation are a wonderful testimony to God's awesomeness. Even more so is God the Holy Spirit's work of creating faith in our hearts in him. So we praise the Lord, O oh my soul, for all his works. We hear. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys, to the place you assigned them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys clench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, the stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats, the crags are a refuge for the hunters. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labor until evening. How many are your works, Lord? 
In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, the Leviathan which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. And may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Today's second Bible reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to the disciples, and they proclaimed the gospel in languages they hadn't previously learned. Though through their words, the Holy Spirit unleashed his power, and many were brought to faith. We hear. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, there were, now there were staying in Jerusalem God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, but in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our, in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this was what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the reading of the gospel. Uh, please stand for the reading of the gospel and the Alleluia.
gospel for the day of Pentecost is from John chapter 14, reading verses 23 to 27. These words will serve as the basis of the sermon. So we hear. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the children to come up for a children's message. Thank you guys for coming up here this morning. So, how many of you guys, if, we, if, I, if I say, where is your home? And I don't want anybody, I want to preface this, nobody tell me your address, okay? Because we're, we're broadcasting on the internet, they don't need to know where you live. But if I were to ask you, where is your home, what would you say? My house. Yes, your house, right? So, okay, maybe, maybe your home, someplace like this. Yeah? No, it's not like that. <laughs> but it's it's a house. It may not be this house. In fact, I doubt it's this house. Okay, maybe it's like somebody else's house. Well, okay, so maybe it's a house. Anywhere else? Where where is home? Where you were born. So yeah, maybe you had that's a different one. So yeah, maybe where you're born. What else would you say? Where's where's home? Where you belong. Where you belong. Ooh, or just Utah, right? Because we're here in Utah, right? So yeah, there's there's some really good ones. So I thought maybe somebody say somebody said some really good where you belong, but I thought maybe like where your family is. So you know, if you think about that, you're just you know your family is your home wherever they are, you're home with them. And so we kind of say sometimes home is where the heart is. You ever heard that phrase? Yep, home is where the heart is. It's, it's the place you love, the people that you love, the place where you belong. So today, what was that? Oh, I just said home is where the heart is. Yeah. So it's like with the people you love, that's home. So today, we get to hear about God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit, he is working. He's even working right now, every time. The word of God is preached. The Holy Spirit is working. He's working on our hearts. And you know what he's doing on your hearts right now? He's making a home. Making a home that God has his home with you. Because that's what we talked about today on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, you see how it's kind of like inside the person? There's a, a verse in the Bible that says, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. It means that God actually lives in us. And yeah, he came in the form of a dove. That's why often the Holy Spirit is symbolized like a God. So yeah, so God is coming to you through his word. And he is making his home with you. When he makes his home with you, that means you've heard that Jesus has paid for all your sins, all the things you've done wrong. He's washed them all away. He lives in you. And he's with you all the time. And that's where your home is. That's where his home is with you. So that's a cool thing. We're going to be talking about that more in the sermon today. But what I want you to know is God... Making his home with you whenever you hear the word of God. So let's pray about that. Let's thank God for that. Dear God, thank you that through your word, you make your home with us. You take away all the bad things we do. You fill us instead with the good things that Jesus did so that we are at home with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys for coming up here this morning. You can head back to your folks. And we're going to continue by singing our next hymn, and it's there on pages 10 and 11, the worship folder, Love Divine, All Love Excel.
the Father who created us, in the name of the Son who redeemed us, in the name of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Amen. The portion of God's word that we're going to focus on today is the gospel reading we heard from John chapter 14. We ask a meditation on that word. Let's pray. Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon us that he would make a home with us through your word. Remind us of all things and continually remind us of these truths as you make your home with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Your friends in Christ. So as I did with the kids up here just a bit ago, it makes a home. And it's not just four walls and a roof. You know, there's more to that. What makes something a home versus a house is... Maybe it is just the length of time that I've spent somewhere. Maybe it's this is the place where I've grown up, and so it's home. This is the place where I've spent the most amount of time in my life, so it's home. Or maybe home is always the place, the physical address we use, the place where we lay our heads at night, that's home. Or home is, as we get a little mushy and we say, home is where the heart is. It's with the people that are not necessarily even blood-related to us, but it's the people that we belong with, the people that we find belong with, the people who are like us, the people who share our same thoughts, hopes, and dreams. That's a home. So are you home with the Lord? Have you made your home with the Lord? I think the disciples thought that they had made their home with the Lord. They had spent three years of their life with Jesus, that many of them even left behind their families to go and follow him, all the time, not that they got rid of their families, but they were with Jesus 24-7 for the most part. And now here they are, celebrating the Passover feast, something very intimate, something that shared their faith, their values, and they're thinking we are at home with our Jesus. But Jesus knows he's going to be leaving them very soon, less than 24 hours. And he knows they're going to feel as if they are abandoned, as if they're spiritual orphans, as if they no longer have a home. So that's why Jesus takes these moments to teach how you get a home, how you make a home with God. So Jesus says, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Pretty straightforward. Obey God's teaching and he will make his home with you. So, okay, what's what's the teaching of God? And maybe that's where we kind of start. Maybe our first thing that we go to in our minds is let's drop to the Ten Commandments. Let's think about what that is. The summary is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor. Ask yourself, well, do this. And God will make his home with you. And we think on that phrase a little bit longer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I try to do that. I try to love him all-encompassingly, but all my heart. That my heart has never had any other loves, any other priorities that I have taken over God. Oh, my soul, that I believe in him wholeheartedly every second of every day. With all my strength, that I make every effort to be with God at all times, never once lacking. Maybe my heart isn't all in this. Maybe I really haven't obeyed his teaching. Love your neighbor as yourself, and me, even, even my enemies. Even the people who, who hate me, the people who mistreat me, the people who wrong me. I mean, I, I want to help people, and I, and I do try to put my best effort forward and, and do good things for other people and, and try to serve them, but everyone. Sometimes I, I put myself first. I put my wants, my desires ahead of them. And now it's not just that this, this simple thing, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. It's so easy to say, so easy to recite, but then to actually do it. 
don't do it. I try, but I'm not really accomplishing it. So then my heart gets troubled when Jesus says the next thing, anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. Well, I don't perfectly obey his teaching, so I, I don't love God. And if I don't love God, then he'll never make his home with me. And so then what, what, what is the consequence of this fact that I cannot just love God perfectly? I mean, am I going to be left as a spiritual orphan just like the disciples were left when Jesus went away on that Thursday evening when he was arrested by the mob? I'm not making this home with God, so who am I making a home with? Am I making my home with the evil one? And it is the Lord knowing that our hearts will be troubled with that idea when we look back on God's teachings and we realize, well, when it comes to the commands, I have just not fulfilled these. I have not done these perfectly. And so he didn't just leave it at anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. He continues. And so he says, all this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said. Okay, so he's going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is going to faithfully preserve all of his words, and so I'm going to know exactly what it is that God teaches, except I still haven't loved him with my whole heart, mind, and strength. And I still haven't loved my neighbor as myself. So just... Knowing all of God's word, does that really help me out? Does that really make a home with God? But Jesus' teaching is not just commands, is it? It's not just some divine spiritual to-do list. Do these things and then I'll make a home with you. It was actually earlier on in Jesus' ministry, it was the day after he fed the 5,000 that people came looking for him. And they came with a very specific question, one that relates very much into what we're talking about today. And the people asked, what must we do to do the works God requires? What do I got to do to make my home with you, God? And Jesus said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. That's not work, to just believe in a snap. I mean, don't, don't you always have to do something more to this? Don't you have to, to put some effort forward? Don't you have to, to make some kind of commitment? Don't you have to change your life? Don't you have to, to live these things as best as you can, and then God will make his home with you? But he says, no, the work of God is this, to believe in the one that he has sent. Jesus taught, believe in me. Why is that the work of God? Because it was his work for us. Because we're kind of asking the question the wrong way. We're asking, how do we make a home with God? And we intrinsically look at those words and say, well, it's what I gotta do. If I obey his teachings, then I do the work of God. Then he makes his home with us. But then Jesus says, the work of God is this. Believe in the one he has said, believe in me, because I know you couldn't do this. I gave you these laws, and no, I didn't lower the standards for you just to try or just to do the best you can with what you have. But no, he said that the standard is still perfection. You still have to hit that mark, and you can't do it. So he comes, true God and true man, and lives under the law of God, and he does love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He did that 24-7 with every ounce of his effort, every single day, for every single moment, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, it was Jesus who elevated that, not just love your neighbor as yourself, because you don't always love yourself, but he loved them more. 
where he would give of himself completely and entirely to not just individuals who were near him, but to the entire world, to give this perfect life, everything done, all of it completed, and the work of God is done. And so the teaching that the Holy Spirit is to remind us of is that everything is done already. That you stand complete before God right here, right now, that God has come to you. And he has made his home in your heart because he has proclaimed to you that very message that God has accomplished everything. Jesus has kept all of the laws, and you know this, and you believe it. So God has already made his home with you. Because it's not about you making your home with God. It's not about you elevating yourself up to say that you're some kind of savior, that I need to do something extra than what Jesus did, but it's saying Jesus actually did all of it already. And because of that, I am made whole, I am made complete, and God has made his home with me. That's why Jesus says to them, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give you as the world gives. The world wants to give you a to-do list. It wants to tell you, you got to do this much more, or you got to add this thing into your faith. This thing will get you closer to God. But what God says is, no, I'm sending my Holy Spirit to you to teach you and remind you of everything I have taught you. And what I have taught you is that I've already completed this for you. It's done. It's accomplished. And so I have made my home with you. It was Paul who wrote to the Corinthians and said, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? God has already made his home with you. He has come to you. He has brought you to that faith. And so now, now because we belong to God, now because he has made his home with us, we live out those commands. Not to earn a home with God. Because God has already made his home with us. The Holy Spirit has already come. And so we live out our faith in obedience to those commands. That's why we try day after day to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. It's because God has already made that home with us. And at any moment where your conscience starts to pin you, and somebody else of the world tries to tell you there's still more you got to do, there's still things that you have to accomplish, it's Jesus' words, the Holy Spirit, he brings them right back to us, and he says, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You're afraid that you don't do enough to make your home with God. But I don't give you as the world gives you. I don't give you based on your merits and your accomplishments. I give you based on what Christ has done for you. And he has already accomplished it. So whenever you feel like I just haven't done enough, that I have to do more to make God love me, more to, to have make that home with God, we're reminded by the Holy Spirit as he comes to us through his word of the message that Jesus has already accomplished it all. God has made his home with us. And you belong to him. And he will not leave you as spiritual orphans. He will not discard you or throw you aside. But instead, he says, no one can snatch one of these out of my hands. And so the Holy Spirit has come. He came on that day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. He came on the disciples, as we heard in the second lesson, with the, the tongues of fire, and they could speak in languages they'd never known, declaring the wonders of God, that everything was already accomplished, and the Holy Spirit worked on hearts that day. 3,000 were added to their number. And that same Holy Spirit is working right here, right now, as we see more and more people brought to faith more and more people who get to live in that wonderful message that everything is already completed for us, that yes, God has made his home with me. I belong to him. And that's where I stand because the Holy Spirit reminds us always of what he has already accomplished. So thank you, God, for making your home with us. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue with our confession of faith there on page 12. This is the third article the Apostles' Creed about the Holy Spirit, along with Luther's explanation. 
Let's join our voices together. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, on my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, yet keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. Before we gather gifts and offerings to our Lord, I want to extend a special welcome to our guests and visitors who are with us today. It's a pleasure to have you. If you'd like to learn more about what we teach, preach, and believe here in Lighton Valley, I encourage you to fill out a contact card, which is every second and fourth chair in that rack by the red hymnal. Put your name on there, whatever contact information you'd like me to use. You put in the offering plate as it comes around, or you can hand it to me at the end of the service today. For those worshiping with us online, there's also a uh, link in the description of the video. You can click on that for our online guest book. Fill out that information. It'll come to me, and I'll use that to get a hold of you. So with that in mind, let's continue our worship by gathering our gifts and offerings to our Lord. church by a profession of faith. Uh, they're all sick this morning, uh, so we'll get to do that at a later date. Uh, so we're going to just continue right along with the prayer of the church here on page 13. We pray. Most Holy Spirit, who teaches us to know Christ and all his benefits, guided by you, we pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. On this, the birthday of the New Testament church, May all Christ's people be filled with his righteousness, peace, and joy. You descended upon the disciples and gave them the ability to speak in languages they have never learned. We ask that today you would continue to give individuals a willing spirit to master foreign languages. Help our pastors to retain and sharpen their Greek and Hebrew skills so that they might study the Bible in those original languages and thereby be well equipped to explain your word to the souls in their care. Raise up young men and women in our church body who are willing to learn foreign languages so that we might send them out into a dying world with the life giving gospel. We ask you to bless all our recent graduates and vicars from Martin Luther College and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary, as well as all our Wells missions at home and abroad, including our missionaries from Truth and Love Ministry who've come to Utah this week and next, that through them, you, the Holy Spirit, will continue your gracious work of calling, gathering, enlightening, and sanctifying by the gospel. And thus bring meaning to the only faith that is of value, sincere faith in Christ Jesus as our perfect substitute and Savior for sin. Dear Lord, on May 28, Roxanne Johnson, the mother of Brandon Huff, passed away. We entrust to you, Roxanne. We know that you are a good and merciful God who paid the price for all of our sins. We know also that you are the author of life and death. You promised 
that you were preparing a place for us when you ascended into heaven. May that be the place where you have taken Roxanne so that she lives now beside you, free from all our strife and struggle here on earth. Be also the God who wipes every tear from our eyes with the comfort of your resurrection victory over the grave. Hold Brandon and his family close to you. Take care of them now and always. Lord, also we pray that you would be with uh, the Kandahusky family as they now are moving on to start a new chapter in life. We pray that you would send your angels to watch over them, to guard them, protect them, that their new start would be blessed by you, that you would take care of all of their needs, and that through all of this, as they meet new people, make new friends, that you, Lord, would be their constant, that their home is already there, the home you made with them, that you will stay with them always. So we commend them into your care, that you would take care of them. Now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your infinite mercy and goodness. We know that you will answer every prayer in the way that is best for the eternal welfare of your children. For we pray in Jesus' name, and as he talks, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue at the top of page 15. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
we invite the communicant members here at Lima Valley and the Millers in Fellowship with our National Church Choir, Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, to come forward at this time. So in keeping with our Lord's practice from 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, it allows us a chance to share our faith with you so that you can know what we believe, and then also we can get to know your faith, what you believe, before we come together in the Lord's Supper. So with those instructions in mind, feel free to ask me questions after service if you do have any questions. But the ushers will guide you up, and we pray for God's blessing on you.
page 18 in our worship Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please remain standing for our final hymn. It's there on page 19, Holy Spirit, Light Divine.
on the Sunday morning, uh, especially to celebrate the day of Pentecost and knowing that the Holy Spirit, God, has made his home with you. And you get to go knowing he will be with us always. Our home is always with him forever. As far as the announcements, you can see what's there on page 20. Um, just you know, highlight the things that are coming up, uh, particularly June calendar, June edition for Christ was already, arts and crafts this Tuesday at uh, 1 p.m. So with that, say hello to somebody that you've come to worship with, and then afterwards, feel free to come on over to the fellowship hall, grab some goodies, and I'll get to the back and shake your hands and wish you God's blessings on your week.